Hey, welcome everybody. It's Ted Padromo. This is Social Selling TV. And we have a special guest. I'm actually meeting for the very first time, but we've been kind of following each other for years on social media. And it's Melly, Melanie Dodaro, who is the author of LinkedIn Unlocked, one of the best LinkedIn books out there. And you know, there's a lot of LinkedIn quote unquote experts out there, and there's only like a handful. Like, we probably count them on one hand, the people I actually trust. And Melanie is definitely one of those. She's really great. And she did me a huge favor this year and she wrote the intro to my book, the foreword to my new book, Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business. So welcome, Melanie. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I love, I love that because, you know, one of the things that is different about the social media industry or our, the industry that we're in is we're much more collaborative, right? So, you know, here I am, a LinkedIn author writing the foreword for your book. Um, and with pleasure, and thank you for asking me, by the way. Uh, it's interesting because not a lot of different industries would do that. Right. No, there's like, most LinkedIn people I know are pretty cool like that, we help each other out. But other ones are like, they wanna destroy us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're one of the good guys. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> get started in LinkedIn? like everything else by accident. <laughs> so I started my company, uh, Top Dog Social Media, years and years ago. And in the beginning, we were doing all social media. So from blogging to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And I very quickly saw that the vast majority of the results that we were getting as a company, and as well as our clients that we were working with, uh, were coming from LinkedIn. And I, you know, over the following couple of years, really kind of reluctantly stopped using everything else. When I say stopped, I mean from a company level. Um, not us individually, but like helping others. So really just focusing with my clients on the things that were actually working. So content creation and LinkedIn. And so now that's predominantly what I do. I, I don't really focus on any of the others. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, we, can you help me out with Facebook? I'm like, no, I'm not the person for that. There's somebody better than me on that topic. And so I really believe in specializing. You know, there's so many people out there that say that they can do everything. Right. Nobody can do everything well, right? So if you want to have somebody that's very generic, that can generically help you with a lot of different things, then uh, you're never going to get success with any one of them. So I really believe in specializing. And uh, so I focus 100% on social selling and LinkedIn. Yeah, it's kind of like me on Facebook. I just use it for fun and post pictures of skiing and you know, me having fun. And LinkedIn, it's more business. Well, you know, there's a big difference between Facebook and LinkedIn in terms of how people use it. Like if you look at Facebook, for example, and if somebody posts anything about business, it's crickets. <laughs> Nobody's really interested. You get very little engagement. Um, whereas on LinkedIn, people are hungry for it. They're interested in it. They want to see business related stuff. There's a lot of engagement with it. So it's a totally different environment. So, you know, if you're using it for business, why not go to the platform where people are embracing it, they're interested in it, they're hungry in it, they're, you know, hungry for it, they're engaging with it. It just makes sense. They're in the business mindset on LinkedIn, so it makes yes. perfect sense. Yep. So what's working for you on LinkedIn right now? You know, really the same thing that's always worked. Uh, you know, I think that, and I, I'm not really 100% sure on your philosophy around this, Ted, but... You know, I know that a lot of social selling experts out there will say that the secret to social selling is sharing content. And I personally completely disagree. <laughs> There's going to be a pause. Everybody's going to be like, what? I thought sharing content was so important. Sharing content is important. There's no question about it. I'm a huge content creator. Uh, you know, I create long uh, form, in-depth, you know, articles on a weekly basis. I create all kinds of different content on a regular basis. So I'm not saying that content isn't important and it doesn't have its place, but in terms of generating business, generating leads and generating clients, it's a passive form. Mm -hmm. you, you essentially you put out your content, you hope that Google's gonna show it, you hope that LinkedIn's gonna show it, and you have to wait for people to come to you. And then they see it, and then you have to wait for them to actually initiate the conversation for, with you. I personally don't think that that's a really good business strategy. Passively waiting, waiting around. You don't know when they're going to show up. 
Right. So where the results have always come from uh, for me and for the clients that I work with is a direct approach, like an uh, outreach. So it involves, you know, finding those uh, ideal prospects on LinkedIn through advanced search or whatever other mediums, uh, reaching out and connecting with a nice personalized message, following up those, those messages with uh, following up that connection request with an addition, additional messages to really start to, you know, have a conversation, build rapport, um, provide a little bit of value, and ultimately move the conversation offline. Yeah. Because in the B2B world, business happens offline. And people should not be trying to sell via social media, via LinkedIn. And I'm not, I'm not talking about if you've got like a, a, a low ticket product or, you know, even a book or something like that. Absolutely. You know, you can, you can sell those things. But if you're selling a service, a high ticket service, it needs to happen during a phone call. It needs to happen during a conversation. You need to find out first what the problems are that somebody's facing. And then if you have a solution to that, then you can bring it up. But you have to get to know them. You have to understand it. Nobody's interested in a pitch via via any kind of message whether it's facebook message linkedin message email message doesn't matter right yeah i was just talking to one of my clients yesterday and he was he does marketing for local businesses and he's been trying linkedin he's been trying facebook and he goes you know i found this local networking group i go to it every friday now and i'm getting lots of business <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's human to human communication yeah you what know <laughs> i've I've always been a proponent of that. I always say, you know, old school works. So, you know, what's not working from an old school perspective is cold calling or cold emailing because there's too many guards up around that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but face to face, human to human, person to person, belly to belly, whatever. Yes, that's always going to work. And here's the thing too, people forget that online tools are just a tool. That's not what they are. They're a tool to build relationships. And so what you need to think about in every way that you use a tool like LinkedIn, for example, is would you do it in person? Ask yourself that every single time you take an action, would you do this in person? For example, would you go to that networking event on that Friday morning? Would you walk up to someone and say, hi, my name is Melanie, buy my stuff? Or in your case, hi, my name is Ted. So why would you do that on LinkedIn? What makes you think that that's acceptable on LinkedIn if it's not acceptable in real life? And so if you talk to people the way that you would talk to them in real life and you show interest in, in them the way that you'd have a conversation in real life, listening to them, asking them questions, getting to know them, why wouldn't you do that on LinkedIn? Right. You know, that's what's going to work. And that's we forget why, that. We forget that. That's why I appreciate you, what you do and how you teach it because it's the same thing. I'm getting so many templated messages now. Basically, they're asking me to buy before we even connect now. And like, you know what? Five years ago, those templated messages worked because not a lot of people were doing it. Right. And so, you know, if I look back at my first book that I wrote on LinkedIn, which was in 2014, those templated messages actually worked. Yeah. But today they don't because marketers kill everything. <laughs> and things get overused and salespeople too, um, we overuse things and then they, they stop working. So we are now in the era of personalization. If you're not personalizing those messages, if people don't think that you've done your due diligence, you've looked at their profile or the content they've shared, they've shared and you're actually referencing that specifically so that they know it's not a template, you're not going to go anywhere. Right. Find something interesting in their profile and ask them about it. Ask questions and they tell you. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just like a real life conversation. <laughs> right. Y'all send a message to a new client say, hey, just for fun, tell me something interesting about you. I wouldn't know from your LinkedIn profile. Like 25% of the people reply and tell me something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be one of them, but uh, <laughs> that's because I got a lot of messages and I would just be like, oh, that would irritate me. <laughs> right. Oh, but you know, somebody, like, but somebody that's not getting a lot of messages, they, yeah, they would like that. That's kind of cool. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. just kind of break the ice, get to know people. But you know, that's a great point of, of what I just mentioned that I wouldn't like that. Like that wouldn't work with me. Um, you know, you have to understand who your target market is, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were trying to reach out to a high level executive or an influencer or somebody that's getting inundated with messages, you have to approach it really differently. 
Mm-hmm. If you're approaching somebody that's not inundated with messages, then that uh, certain things are going to work with them that won't work with others. Yeah. You know, like a, some people will accept connection requests without a personalized message. Mm-hmm. Many won't. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people, it's like, just take a moment and, you know, find something about this person, show them that you care, you're interested send a custom message and they'll reply and the relationship starts at a deeper level than just a cold call. Yeah. You know, a a relationship begins. Ultimately a relationship is really going to be established once you move that conversation offline. Um, But you do have the opportunity to use these tools to start to build one enough to earn the trust to move that conversation offline. Mm -hmm. And I look at everything from uh, everything digital from a specific goal and objective. So what do I use Twitter for? Well, I used to use Twitter for different reasons that I use it for now. Now I actually use it to stay up to date on the news. <laughs> um, I, I post far less than I used to. I'm, I'm far less engaged in it than I used to be. Um, but what I used, what, what it used to be my primary tool for was driving traffic to my blog. It did a fantastic job of that. I find mm-hmm. that, you know, that's diminished over the years and uh, I don't worry about that so much anymore. Not to mention now I make up for that traffic times 10 with uh, Google with organic search because I've got a long, you know, an old blog, old meaning, you know, in a good term, it's been around (laughs) for a long time. It's been around for a long time. Google (laughs) likes it. Yes, exactly. It's established. (laughs) That's a much better phrase, (laughs) much better word. (laughs) But yeah, so, you know, you just look at everything for what is the purpose? LinkedIn, the purpose is not to sell. The purpose is to book phone calls, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and stay top of mind. So that's where the content sharing comes into play. So content sharing has its place, but it's just to stay top of mind. And you have to hope and pray that that results in business. Right. Don't, don't hope and pray. Take business into your own hands. Control your results by having uh, you know, a system uh, and a plan to to take control of that and and reach out to a certain amount of prospects that ultimately turn into, uh, you know, a certain amount of leads and turn into a certain amount of offline calls, which then turn into a certain amount of clients. That was the big theme in social media marketing world this year. Oh yeah. Over quantity. It's not about getting millions of likes now. It's about putting out one piece of quality content, even if it's once a month. Yeah. And really, yeah. Like your, po- your posts are just awesome. You actually write really great articles and you're not just writing articles to write articles and get in the search engine. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. And you know, there's so much mi- confusion and myths around content creation. Oh, content needs to be short because people have short attention spans. Well, my content is on average between 1800 and 3000 words, right? Each and every single blog post. On average, I'd say about 2,200. Mm-hmm. So that's far from being short. <laughs> and it's Yet. high quality content that you put out. And it's on yeah. a regular basis is what I noticed too. Once a week, I'm going to see yeah. an email from you with a new blog post. That's right. <laughs> it's clockwork. Every yeah. Thursday, you get that email, my, my featured article for the week. And yeah, it's in-depth. It's uh, substantial so that people actually feel like they're getting value. Um, if people don't feel like they're getting value from your, their, your free stuff, they'll never pay for your paid stuff. Right. So how long does it take you to write an article each week? A, a long time. <laughs> a long time. And I've just recently hired an editor. Um, so, you know, uh, writing the article, coming up with the idea, structuring the article, writing the article, editing the article. And then now I have one more uh, set of eyes because you know what, there's never a time when you're writing your own content that there won't be an edit that you miss right? ever. And um, I'm actually learning how to write better uh, with hiring this editor because she's like editing down the number of words I use. So I might have a sentence with 15 words in it where it only needs 12. Mm -hmm. And she takes out three words. And so that's really good. Actually, the, the uh, word count of my articles are going down. I just edited today's. I just got her edits back from it today. It, I sent it to her and it was 1,986 words. And she sent it back to me and it was 1,790. So almost 200 words gone. 
I learned that with being my books being edited by entrepreneur. They're like, oh, you don't need those that the word that. <laughs> yeah. but right. Yeah. Words, like you don't need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, depending on where you are in your business, uh, you know, I, I, I obviously I have an editor for my books and stuff like that, but not normally for blog posts. Not to mention sometimes because I'm like clockwork with my blog posts, they're posted Tuesday or Wednesdays of each week, Thursday the newsletter goes out. Um, Sometimes that article is not done till Tuesday. <laughs> like today, today it was finished back from the editor though. Uh, so I had it to the editor several days ago. Uh, but there is circumstances where I'm traveling or something's happening and, uh, you know, I can't get it to her on time. But, you know, that's not something that you need to, you know, focus on right now if that's not in the budget or whatever. It's, you know, just editing editing it yourself is, is certainly important and you know you're gonna miss things i have friends who love my content and they'll like literally send me an email melanie you made a mistake and what i hate is when they send send me an email saying i made a mistake in my newsletter like that i cringe i cringe because i'm like i can't fix that it's already gone out Right. If they find a mistake in my blog post, no problem. Quickly go in, edit that. But oh man, I, I swear, it's, I almost like don't even, I don't want to hear if I have a mistake in my newsletter anymore. <laughs> yes. I had that happen it's, yesterday. It's I sent out an email and I had a link in it and the test email, it worked fine. I sent it out to like 5,000 people and the link didn't work. Like, <sighs> yeah, it's painful. It's painful. Yeah. So do you post these articles on LinkedIn too, or you just keep them on your blog? Yeah, great question. So I post them on my blog. I used to post more frequently on LinkedIn Publisher, but as you probably know, LinkedIn Publisher is not getting the, uh, the exposure and the views that it used to. So what I do is now I'm like once a month, I'll publish an article on LinkedIn Publisher. Mm -hmm. I'm not diligent with it anymore, like once a week, um, just so that nobody's looking at my profile and seeing that I posted an article six months ago. Right. Or two years ago. Like or, two year, or two years ago. Yeah. So once a month and, and I don't even know that I'm doing it because my assistant just goes in and does it and I never even tell her to do it. And I never tell her what article to publish. She just does it. So I'm always like all of a sudden I'll get these comments of people commenting on a new article. I'm like, oh gosh, I guess I just published an article on LinkedIn Publisher. Right. I have no idea. Awesome. <laughs> What's working for me is I write the article and put it on there and then I do a status update with hashtags in it. To yeah. points to the LinkedIn article. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. That's, that's key to, to share it as a status update for sure. Yeah, they want to keep you on LinkedIn. They want to keep you on Facebook. They don't want you linking out anymore. Yeah, no, exactly. So link posts are performing very, very poorly on LinkedIn right now. LinkedIn's just not liking them. Uh, you know, I used to get far more traction on, on links uh, that I would share on LinkedIn, and now they're extremely... Uh, extremely low. So what I do is, um, and I'm sure you know this and you've probably done this. So you can post a link post. So you, you share your content, you have the link in there. And then, you know, the, the box of the picture of the, you know, the image in your blog and the, the link shows up. Mm -hmm. If you click the little X on that, then you trick LinkedIn into believing it's a text post, right? Yep. So what I do is every time I share a link post, I'll do two posts per week of uh, the blog post that I've shared. One will be a traditional link post because I want to, I'm measuring the numbers, right? So one's the traditional link post where I let it populate. And then maybe two days later, I'll share it again where I'll click that little X and trick LinkedIn into thinking it's a text post. And the, the faux text post gets four to five times more visibility. And Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that LinkedIn's actually not that savvy <laughs> that they can't figure out, Hey, it's still link post. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people so, are saying put the link in the first comment, but you can't pin the comment on LinkedIn. So it's I know. very, yeah. So if you get a zillion comments, people are going to have to scroll through and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody did a test like that. They said put in the post link in comments. So you, people would have to scroll way down. But if, like I yeah. say, if you get a, 20 or 30 comments, no one's going to scroll through that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if, uh, you know, it would be nice if the comments were always in chronological order. Right. 
it's one thing that drives me crazy, even from a, you know, like I like to engage with people who have, you know, engaged with my content. If they just say, hey, great content, and I get a zillion of those, I'll start just clicking like versus acknowledging each and every single one. But if there isn't a substantial amount of, of in-depth comments, then um, I'll respond back. And it drives me crazy because I'll kind of go, want to go through and see and, you know, of course, they're showing the top comments versus the, the recent. I just, just leave it for in chronological order for me. <laughs> like, I'd like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great. I want to respect your time and not take too much of your time. But this is Melly's book, LinkedIn Unlocked. It's awesome. Highly recommend it. So grab it off Amazon or your website, right? Yeah. How yeah. can people get in touch with you to learn more and read these awesome blog posts? Yeah. So topdogsocialmedia.com is uh, how to uh, follow the content that I, I publish each week. Um, and if you do want a great deal on my book, uh, you can get, get it for 40% off the price of Amazon. Uh, so I have a special page set up. It's for the digital version of the book. And you can go to linkedinunlockedbook.com and get it for 40% uh, off the price that it's listed on Amazon. Awesome. Hey, thanks for your time. My pleasure. It's so cool. nice to be here with you today. We'll and talk. congratulations on your book. Yes, thank you very much. And I'll have to come to Europe and visit because I just love Europe and Amsterdam. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks. Dutch, Dutch is my uh, project for next month to start learning. Oh, just in one month, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, to, to begin, to begin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks again. Bye. For more free training, visit socialsellingminute.com.